Uh, dear ladies and gentlemen, good morning and uh, welcome to the session one, the specific name and magnitude of structural and social consequences of decarbonization. The latest edition of uh, World Energy Outlook uh, released just today states uh, a new energy economy is emerging, but much too slowly to reach net zero emissions by 2050. On the other hand, uh, the growth of clean energy technologies provides reasons uh, for optimism. Uh, the Espan policy support uh, I'd like to refer headline in our topic paper, uh, Transformative Approach in Multiscolar Territorial Governance is Needed, particularly in tension-ridden regions affected by the energy transition. Also, Espan Locate Territories and Low Carbon Economy Project uh, presented later focused in territorial implications of transition, defining the potential for alternatives to existing energy production. Obviously, the transition is territorial by nature. Evidences and in impacts can be clearly monitored across the Baltic uh, Sea region. Yeah, and... Uh, I'd like to move slide. Uh, the carbonization, which means phasing out dependence of uh, carbon containing fossil fuels and uh, carbon embedded uh, in other societal and industrial processes, is implemented in uh, multiple territorial dimensions. This process is quite complex, contested, and in some way controversial. Substantial part of uh, the research, as well as policy making, focuses uh, on the just transition, promising no one is left behind. In this session, we are going to get deeper understanding what is planned and programmed in Silesia and Poland and in the Estonian oil shale region. Progress and success depends not just on systemic changes across regions, uh, but it requires painful compromises between three pillars of energy, namely energy security, energy equity and uh, environmental sustainability. This universal model serves globally despite some biases between uh, continents stored developing world, uh, the Nordic countries uh, stand in the top, Sweden second, uh, Denmark third, Finland fourth, and we can also point out significant gap between western and eastern coast of the Baltic Sea, Lithuania is just 16, uh, Latvia 22nd and Estonia 26. Here in Estonia, we are expecting to climb up as uh, fossil oil shale energy is phased or phasing out and uh, renewables are entering uh, uh, slowly. On the other hand, uh, the energy security and equity struggle to keep the current position, as you all know, energy imports and prices uh, rise. Many of us uh, have been contributing uh, in upgrading of the strategic document uh, WhatsApp, uh, and uh, it has been uh, discussed uh, how the Baltic Sea region could look like in 2040, what trends and policies can be relevant uh, for our macro region. Obviously, energy and climate issues dominate in all WhatsApp team clusters, urban rural accessibility, particularly maritime uh, planning. Uh, as uh, uh, large offshore makes uh, makes the strongest uh, transition uh, footprint. In the on the map, uh, you can see uh, they had uh, transfers uh, in our region, and uh, as you can see, flows uh, 
uh, predominantly from north to south and uh, and also uh, we acknowledge uh, harsh, rea harsh reality of rising prices uh, prices differ by price zones uh, 40 euros uh, per megawatt hour in northern regions of Sweden and Norway up to 170 euros in Estonia and in the Baltic zone. Policy questions uh, to be discussed in this session, what is the specific nature and magnitude of consequences of decarbonization? Uh, second, how those challenges are spatially distributed? And uh, third uh, question, what are different regional approaches to structural change? Also, uh, to introduce, uh, I'd like to carry on uh, the message uh, of ESPON and the regional studies community not to leave this process just purely sectoral approach. And uh, we have to look very closely uh, links between spatial and land use planning, uh, what I says essential for local activities uh, and, and what are layers and ties uh, at the subnational uh, scale and what kind of political commitment uh, made across uh, countries. Also, uh, we uh, implement and apply all this uh, rather complicated uh, setting in regional super labs to say, uh, and uh, there is much policy innovation uh, uh, on, the, on those positive uh, near carbon uh, neutral regions, but also in uh, transition regions uh, to introduce new energy technologies and uh, business models. And this is associated uh, with societal issues uh, employment, environment, and uh, also livable cities. Uh, this is going to happen in key sites in particular, and uh, scales uh, which should be monitored, and all this, uh, all this progress uh, towards decarbonization is uh, negotiated uh, in uh, many features, and also uh, uh, we have to be uh, clear that uh, those pathways, transition pathways, are geographically differentiated and also institutional settings are different. Uh, it's our agenda for the next uh, hour and a half, and, uh, and we are going to introduce uh, two transition regions, uh, Upper Silesian region in Poland, uh, presented by Marta uh, Koronetska and uh, the North and Eastern Estonia by Ivan Sergeyev. And then uh, we move to the uh, research uh, framework, uh, which uh, supports uh, such uh, territorial approaches uh, presented by uh, Martin Wolstadt.